joint corrective morphs. What are they? How do we make them happen? And you know, what, what can we do to create them in Dash Studio? Let's do this. So under morphs, we have top out. That's our morph. And also I've rigged my cylinder. So that's kind of cool. So I can go and grab a piece of him like I showed you in a previous episode. I can grab a piece of him and then move his top like so. So imagine now I would like to build my joint corrective morph that if I bend the top part minus 45 in the X rotation, like the bend part. If I do that, I would like for the morph to come out. That's that's the purpose of a joint corrective morph. So usually you would use this in something like you have an arm on a figure and as the arm bends, the bicep muscle comes out. The bicep muscle is a morph and the bending is a joint rotation. So you marry up a joint rotation with a morph. So you, essentially you're telling Das Studio, if this rotation on this joint happens and it reaches a certain value, then put this morph on to a certain percentage. That's essentially that. It's, it's, it's controlling, it's driving a morph from a controller rotation. So let's say I wanted to make that happen. I'll put minus 45 in the bend rotation, just completely arbitrary because that's, you know, that's, that's, that's what we want to do. So the first thing we need to do is crank up our morph on our little guy. This is the effect we want. We want for this to happen as soon as this rotates 45 degrees. And then we need to go and marry these two values up. And that happens on something quite scary called the property hierarchy tab. That's something you may not have come across and it'll open automatically as soon as you put this guy into edit mode. I think if you go and right click on the morph slider that you wanted, nothing comes up. But if you put this into edit mode and then you right click, so now it's in edit mode here. Now, if you right click on that slider, you see this thing at the bottom that says show in property hierarchy. And that's an interesting thing. I think I've docked mine already. If I select that, oh no, it comes up here. So I'm gonna go and dock it on the right hand side here because that's just, you know, makes more sense. And that looks a bit scary but it has a list of all joint rotations and morphs that are currently in your object. So if you're doing this on a Genesis figure, you'll see this list is massive. So in my case, I've got the top out morph here. And if I open that up, I can see that it has another section called controllers. And that's really what I'm interested in. So I would like to use my joint rotation to drive this thing as a controller, essentially. So let's leave this open while also having our parameters tab open so that we can see these things. I know so many sneaky things, right? I totally agree. So now I need to go back to my exact joint rotation that I would like this to drive. So if I go and select my top cylinder here and then I head over to rotation, I can see that this thing, this is, this is what is making that happen. This is what I'd like to drive this thing. And I would like for that to happen at minus 45. So or any other value that you want. I'm just picking minus 45 here. And so the trick is now to take this in edit mode and left click and drag this rotation over and drop it onto the first stage controller here. First stage controller. If I do that, it goes plonk, the thing goes away. That's kind of okay. I think I've done it the correct way around. I might also not have done that, but <laughs> we'll find out. So it has, it's, it's now made this connection here. If I go and open this up, it's now made this connection that there is this uh, ERC Delta Z rotate. So the, the morph is being controlled by this rotation here now. So I think now, if I remember correctly, all I need to do is go back to my morph, which is in the top part of my figure, under morphs. There we go. If I do that now, go and dial him up to 100%. All I have to do now, I think, is ERC freeze one of the two. I think I need to ERC freeze the bend. Don't quote me on this. It's new to me too, <laughs> but I thought we could learn together. Let's try that. I'm going to go and ERC freeze this with the controller driven. Let's try that. Nice. It knows that top out should be at a certain value. Now hit accept. And uh, that is that. It puts it back in high resolution. I don't really know why. I suppose it wants to do me a favor. I can come out of edit mode now and go and twiddle with my joint rotation. And that now shows me that the morph happens or is gradually being dialed in as I reach my minus 45 here or beyond. And that's how to do that. 
quite fascinating, isn't it? I think you can probably see it better if I go into, if I just take that uh, high resolution out again. There, so it only happens on, on towards minus 45. If I didn't do ERC freeze, it'll still work, but it doesn't gradually interpolate as I dial this up. So if I go and uh, not do ERC freeze, it'll basically remain flat until it reaches exactly minus 45, and then it just pops out. That's how you do that. So one important thing to remember is that you can only marry up one joint rotation with one morph. So if I wanted to have something similar happen as I move it to the other side, I can't use the same morph because that morph is already controlled by one joint, if I understand it correctly. So if I wanted to have it go in both directions, you have to make a second morph. So it's very unique to, you know, these bits and pieces. Crazy stuff.